Hi, welcome to Ready Reckless Racing. Um, it's race preview time, it's King George weekend, so we've got a fantastic weekend uh, action ahead of us. Uh, looking at uh, Saturday the 29th of July. Um, bit, of a bit of a quick recap on today's um, horses, bit of a disappointing day. I thought uh, Grenon Bay was quite disappointed. I was expecting a, a much better performance on that one, so not really a lot to say about that. Just didn't run anywhere near as what I expected. Max Mayhem, I thought, ran a cracking race. I thought we were a little bit unlucky there. I think if we'd have come around the outside rather than up the inside, it might have been a different result. Um, I thought Garcia was worth taking on at those prices, but um, yeah, I, and whilst I respected City Street, I wasn't really expecting it to uh, to produce that performance. But as I say, I think track position played a lot of that inside. At uh, Ascot, he's never great over the um, over the round course. So I've been hitting the crossbar a bit recently, frustrating, but things will turn. I'm uh, I'm confident of that as they they always tend to. Um, so looking ahead to the racing tomorrow, um, we probably should start with the King George really, I mean it's a great race, I think it's a race to savour and watch really, probably race of the season rather than actually um, having a betting opinion on it. Having looked at it in a bit, bit of detail, I found it really, I found it difficult to find a betting angle in this race. Um, so, as I say, I think I'll be, um, I'll be sitting back and just watching it and uh, enjoying it. If I was forced to put a selection up, it probably boringly would be August Rodan. I thought he was really impressive in the derby. King of Steel gives that form a really solid look. Um, good to see them two going head to head with it again. Um, but a bit like what I mentioned earlier, really. I mean, Ryan Moore tends to come quite wide at Ascot on the round course. He's drawn stall 11, so I think he's perfectly placed, whereas King of Steel under Kevin Stark might find himself caught up on that inside a little bit, possibly. Um, but yeah, great race, and um, it wouldn't be one I'd be um, investing any money in personally. But let's look at some of the races, what we are going to um, identify a bit of value on. Uh, starting with the 450 at Ascot, really good handicap here. Um, put the ground today, it looked relatively soft without kind of being visibly soft, I would say. I've not checked the sectionals or anything like that to back that up, but they, they looked like they were getting through it, well, easily getting through it really. It does drain quite well, Ascot, but it did still look a, a little bit on the testing side at the same time. Um, that's not going to really hinder any of these guys in here really. I think if anything a few of these probably want it a bit softer. So Latam is where we'll start. I mean Latam's got a really really kind of upward curve profile. Uh, really impressive this season. It's um, it's rare to be honest that you will find a horse who can you know win like he did. Uh, the Irish Lincoln of 87 put in two better performances since and still only be rated £8 higher than he was for the Lincoln. So uh, from a handicapping point of view, the, yeah, he's got a lot more to come, this horse. Um, I've got him around about the 3-1 to one mark. I think he's about 5-2. to two. So my 3-1 to one might be a little bit generous. Probably somewhere in the middle, 11-4 to four is maybe a good barometer, accurate kind of price for this. It's going to take some beating tomorrow. Though. Yeah, you've got Ryan Moore in the saddle as well. Um, but probably much to my folly, um, I am actually going to take it on. Um, I'm going to take it on with potentially price permitting uh, Garley. Um, I do like this horse. Uh, I think um, you know, I, w I wouldn't pay too much attention to his run in the Hunt Cup. I think if you if you look at that race again, he was drawn over on the uh, low side. They went hard that day. Um, he was up there all the way. Um, and actually only three horses or two other horses should I say on his side actually passed him and they were both held up one was the winner Jimi Hendrix who obviously put in a bit of a freakish performance and, and pulled way clear and has run well against since in higher grade uh, the other one was Jewel Identity and Jewel Identity is a good solid performer and as I say Jewel Identity was kind of a bit more held up off the, uh, off the pace that um, they were setting so and they've just gone too hard. I wouldn't read too much into that. Maybe a little bit disappointing. He hasn't had a pound or two knocked off him for that. That would, that would give me a little bit more confidence for tomorrow. But I think we are where we are. If you look at its run at Newmarket last season, beating King of Conquest, I think King of Conquest is probably a Group 3 horse now, maybe even a Group 2 horse. You know, very good horse. Uh, Garley beat it probably with a little bit of... Well, it travelled better and it quickened better than King of Conquest. And that was over, that was over nine furlongs. So... You know, I, I think that really, and that was giving it weight as well. So then that proves it, that Garley's a, a really useful animal. You know, he might be seven years old, but it's clearly a horse who's had its injury or troubles over over its career. Because you know, to be ridden at seven years old and only about eleven races, um, he's very very lightly raced still. 
So I think he's worth taking on with uh, against Latam probably purely because of the price because I've got them a lot closer. Um, so I've got, as I say, I've got Latam at threes and I've got Garley in next in at fours. Um, I think Garley's about fives I've seen. I reckon you might even be able to get a bit of 11 to 2. I'll probably be trying to get a bit of that 11 to 2. Um, and that would be how I would be looking at this race. Um, a couple of the others, I mean, there's an unknown. I think it's is it Argentinian, the top weight. Um, so he's got bits and pieces of form in made down, but he's going to be difficult to assess. You've got the Roger Varian lightly raced Aku I don't know if I've uh, butchered that one or not. But. Um, that horse to me, whilst it's got a bit of ability, it looks like a horse who probably wants to go up in trip, I would say, by King, but at the Galileo Mare, looks like it maybe wants 10 furlongs. Mr. Mistopheles has got bits and pieces of form. Uh, probably the main danger is this unknown kind of Ed Bethel one down the bottom, Loughton, very lightly raced. Looked really impressive so far. Comes in here as a three-year-old with a bit of a featherweight against these. Um, his form doesn't look anywhere near as strong as Latam and Garley's obviously but uh, it's got scope for it's certainly got scope for improvement and it'll be interesting to see how that one runs tomorrow but yeah my recommendation as I say I'm not confident because Latam set such a good standard um, I just think for the difference in price if we can get 11 to 2 on Garley I'd probably rather back Garley at 11 to 2 than I would Latam at 5 to 2 I think there's a chance Latam gets a bit shorter than that as well to be honest I mean, it could, could even be a 7 to 4 2 to 1 shot closer to the race but it would be Garley for me in that race uh, moving on to the next one at Ascot I liked the look off and here we've got a uh, I, I, this next one the 525 I would actually put this up as potentially my nap of the weekend and it's a, it's a double figure price I think there's a really interesting one in this. Um, so it's a, it's a five furlong um, handicap sprint. Now, if, to be totally honest, I don't do many five furlong races, and that's purely because there's so much racing out there. You've got to apply some level of filters um, to to have a chance of looking at a lot of the racing that you want to. Certainly, when for, you know when I go for a race, it probably takes me um, minimal of an hour, I would say, for an average, let's say, nine, ten run a race, and a bit longer for a bigger field than that. So you've got to apply some some level of filters, and I filter out five furlongs, and there's a few other filters I, I do as well to, to kind of reduce the, the the workload, if you like, and focus on certain races. But there's a horse that's drawn me in here, and it's a bit of a tracker horse um, from recently. And uh, the horse I'm interested in here is uh, the top weight, the Stuart Williams trained existent. I, I think this horse has got a really, really good chance tomorrow. Um, I have backed it already. Um, there's 14s around. I think 14s each way, four places is, is really good. Again, I wouldn't have no problem going 12s for five places or something like that. Um, and the reason I like this horse tomorrow is if you look at his last seven or eight runs now, He's, he's been running at a much higher level. He's been running in Group 3s, Group 1s, Group 2s, and he just doesn't really run a bad race. Um, you, you look at his form, I mean, this season, if, you, if we start off with the Haydock run in the Group 2, what Dramatise won, he did, if Dramatise was on the Golden Highway that day, and to be fair, so was, um, so was Existent. If you look at the first four, it was Dramatised, Equilateral, Living the Dream, and Existent, and they were all drawn 10, 13, 14, and 11. So, yeah, existence probably been slightly flatted to some degree, but no more than equilateral and living the dream. And they're both kind of, you know, they're both rated six or six to eight pound higher than him. And he's, he's only been beating the length or a length and a half from those guys. So, you know, he's then gone into the group one, um, the King stands at Ascot. So he's not, he's not group one horse, but he still ran really well, you know, again. And so this horse just keeps running good, good races. But the reason what got me tracked him, or the reason I tracked this horse, was actually his last run. Now, his run a couple of weekends ago at Ascot was the first time he dropped down to a handicapped company in, it's a good probably nine or ten runs uh, going back to early stage last season. So it was the easiest assignment he's had for a long time. And what caught my interest on this race straight away? My interest peaks when I watch races if it's obvious they're going too slow or it's obvious they're going too fast because straight away that, that you know, opens up potential to have eye-catching horses. This for a five furlong race, I don't think I've ever seen a, such a high quality you know, class two handicap over five furlongs go so slow as they did for these first two furlongs. Um, I think the side existent was on. They had a bit of a stand. Uh, they had a bit of a bias that side, but they didn't seem to want to use it. They kind of headed that way and then looked at coming back over to the middle. 
And, you know, he's found himself shuffled right towards the back. He's probably about 13th, 14th early on, sat off that slow pace. The, you know, the, the winner's done well, you know, and won it from the front, but the, the horses who were all around him were all at the front all the way, the big board, obviously he takes on the big board again here. And that was first time visor as well. And they've kept with the visor tomorrow, which I'm, 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 I was kind of hoping they would do that. He's had another two pound come off, but I just think you can mark that run up. So not only was that his easiest assignment for a while, the race wasn't run to suit. You can mark his run up. He's back in the same grade again here. If anything, this looks a slightly easier race than that one again, uh, even though you've got you know good horses in there, including improvers like the big board. But I, I can't see a scenario where the big board kind of dictates a slow five furlongs exactly like he did there a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I just think I just think this opens up a really interesting opportunity for existing here we've got ross and ryan on board stall one you can never be too sure with ascot i mean it isn't a huge field so they're unlikely to split stalls are in the middle but he's, he's got a bit of pace around him as well which i quite liked um there was I'm trying to find it now i can um i've got it here in front of me but there was uh, yeah i mean he's got uh Cunan's near him uh, he wasn't the one I was thinking of, but uh, uh, Dusky Lord, Dusky Lord's in five, uh, Bergerac in four, so he's got pace around him there in stall one that he can kind of sit and track off those, uh, track those guys. So I'm really confident of this one tomorrow. Actually, it's um, I'm expecting a big run, and um, I, I do think he's uh, he's overlooked in the market. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely, I'd probably still recommend backing him each way, but yeah, I wouldn't be against if people didn't want to, you know, put in the each way. Um, in your stake and you just wanted to go for the win um, if, uh, you know, I, I do think this fellow will go close tomorrow and um, yeah he'd be one of my strongest fancies ok so um, if we look at some of the um, the other races now I'm going to actually split this in two because um, I've looked at the Salisbury card and there's a couple of in, in, at Salisbury that I'm interested in as well but there's no prices up yet and it is very much price dependent those two races so I will do a quick update video on Salisbury's racing later on um, I think one of the other races I was keen to get involved with but the prices haven't, hasn't quite worked out how I'd wanted was the 510 at York uh, that's a really interesting handicap um, I thought Cormier might get overlooked in the market but he hasn't I had him in at 8 to 1 and he's opened about 8 to 1 I don't know why I had a feeling they might put him in at 12s or 14s uh, we haven't quite got that unfortunately second of time um, run after a wind up um, one from one at York, you know, I think he's still reasonably handicapped. There's a race that sticks in my mind with this horse, and it was last season because uh, I had quite a quite a large bet on City Streak, and it's ironic that City Streak has beat my Max Mayhem today. But uh, I had a little, quite a large bet on City Streak at Chester, and it was it was a real strong fancy. But Cormier just smashed it, um, smashed it up, and um, you know, and, and that's that's the one kind of performance that just sticks in my mind with this horse. Now he's only three pound higher here, really. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking he might. As I say, I was thinking we might get a bit of a, a bit of a juicy price on him, but it doesn't seem to be the case. If anything, the, the price is race up very virtually identical to what I've got. You know, um, I thought what a cracker was the other one down the bottom that was very interesting, but I've got it five to one. He is five to one. I think as it, as it stands at the minute, I, I would probably put a no bet in for this race as it currently stands. But I think if Cormier does start edging out to um, 12 to 1 plus, I'd probably look at getting involved with Cormier each way. Um, Enthrallment's another one who's got a really, really solid kind of look to it and solid profile coming into this race. Um, but again, he's, I've got him at 13 to 2, I think he is around about that mark. And then, yeah, Gibside, I've got Gibside around 11 to 2. So they're, they're all pretty much of a much, uh, much of a muchness, really, with what I've got. So I think for now, uh, what I'll do, I'll just put forward the two at Ascot. So that's a Garley uh, win bet for, uh, I would say, minimum price. Uh, I'll go 11 to 2, let's say 11 to 2 minimum price and then existence um, each way. He's currently about 14s. I think 14s is a great price. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd certainly recommend having a few quid each way on him tomorrow. So yeah, I'll, as I say, I will provide a bit of an update on Salisbury later. I've got two races in particular I'm keen on, but I, I need to see the market on those really just to see how it pans out um, because it could be quite a topsy-turvy market in those two races. So um, look out for that one later. All right, thanks guys. Cheers, bye.